of America then, Stuart? You just got back really busy. <coughs> um, we never, we were doing that much travelling, you never get a chance to really meet anybody or talk to anybody that. Just, I was quite surprised by the sheet, just the vastness of the place. And just the speed of everything, it's, I think it's just really, really fast. Like everything's got to be done in five minutes. It's like every street sort of screams at you, buy this, feed me, go in here. <laughs> and uh, it's just totally alien to anything I've, I've ever seen before. It's, Really interesting to go there, actually. It's worth seeing. Now you've got back, it's it's odd, isn't it? Whenever a band's gone away and they've, they've just been a medium success band over in Britain and you go over and you come back with the, your laurels on because America's loved you, you always have a bit of a hard time in Britain, don't you? They're funny, they don't seem, especially the music press, don't seem to like that happening. Do you think that's um, going to happen with you? I don't know, I really hope not. I mean, it's not as if a case that it's, it's changed us or changed anything that we're about, really. I mean, we're still about the same things we were about a year ago. And uh, if people want to see it like that, well, fair enough. I don't think the amount of records you sell changes you as a person. Mm. I think it's, with certain groups it does. With us, it's, we're neither here nor there with it. It's what we set out to do is, is try and <coughs> change the way that people saw music and the way that people reacted towards it. And, uh, and we're still trying to do the, the, the sell same things. Uh, we we played in Glasgow just as soon as we, you know, a week after we come back at Barrowlands, and it was brilliant. And it's, people were just amazing. And as, as, and as far as they're concerned, there's nothing's changed for them. It's definitely no change for us. It's, it's hard though, isn't it, not to change? I mean, even just to, I mean, people change all the time, whether you're a garage mechanic or whether you're a musician, just going different places, oh, everybody seeing has different right things change. Yeah, well, don't, don't you find, I mean, Bruce Stephen, that, that going around America and people get the kind of adulation that you obviously got in the interest, it must have changed you a bit. I kind of get, um, I didn't really bother about it. I didn't like to think about it too much, you know? I mean, if folk come up and say, oh, you're great and this and that, I mean, <laughs> still not bother about it, you know? <laughs> so what? <laughs> yeah, it's funny that the, the bands, that the two British bands that are doing so well out there are, are yourselves and you two. Uh -huh. And then, I suppose uh, you could say they've got... British, they're Irish. Well, I was just going to say, they're, they've got a real Celtic feel about them. And I know you've always been pointed out as having a real Celtic feel to you. Do you think that's a... Just a coincidence. I was going to ask you how you get your bike, but it's like a guitar. <laughs> it's cassettes in the back. Oh, but I mean, you know what I'm getting. Everybody says there's a real Scottish yeah. feel to your music, and obviously there's a real Celtic feel to you too. Now, is that something that the Americans are desperate for? Um, I mean, that's just their tag in a way. I think. I think, I think that's, that's everybody like, likes to sort of label music doing, and that's that's what we're seen as. For me, it's just I uh, us playing the music that comes naturally to. To ourselves. I mean, when Bruce and I started working, we didn't set out with any great master plan. I mean, all we wanted to do was sit down and write a bunch yeah, of songs. songs and just play them in front of as many people as we can. And uh, we just wanted things to be natural. I know, like, sit down and, and pre plan it like a set of building blocks and, and make it like, <coughs> like a musical language, as, as it were. And uh, it's not anything like I didn't go about looking for wee tutors up in the hills who could play the fiddle and steal their songs or anything like that, you know. <laughs> by the wayside just in as much as the most important thing to them is being famous and girls waiting for them outside the stage door. If you've got something extra, do you think that gives you the edge? 
I think it take, takes it away from the norm and brings it back down onto a mere human level. If, if you're aware, aware of why you're writing songs and what you're writing them about, instead of uh, being all too long to look to, towards what the end result will be, I think a lot of groups start out with the main idea. Their head has been becoming as rich as, and as famous as quickly as possible, which I think is a shame in a way because it just it means that music then is obviously always geared around success and people can't try things that that are coming from themselves and other things that they want to do. What about the future then? I mean, you've done what you wanted to do and you still are. Can you see yourself stopping when you, you haven't got anything else to say? Aye. Gotta do it forever. You'd just be lying to yourself if you just carried on doing the same old thing time in and time out. And there are, when you find yourself in that situation, it's time to go, well, wait a minute, you know, why am I doing this? And you've got to question yourself a lot. I think yeah, a lot of it, a lot of people just carry on for the sake of it. It's safe for them, you know, they're in a nice, comfortable job and they find it quite easy to, to, to listen to their old There's records no point, really. and copy them. But lots of people do do it and don't enjoy uh, it because they're sort of driven on by some need, this, the need to have a career, if you like. You don't see it that way. Or the need to have an ego, you mean? <laughs> or an ego, yeah. I'm not expecting to grow flowers in the desert, but I can look and breathe and see the